Alrighty, now in this video, I kind of want to start moving some stuff over to C++, and more specifically, I want to create kind of our base actor and get set up with, you know, setting up some basic, well, the instant static mesh component. We're going to kind of recreate what we have in our base here, but in C++ to make sure everything's good to go, everything's working, and then we can start adding some functionality to it, such as this remove index and really expanding it a little bit more in order to uh, kind of make it a little more user friendly. So to begin, we're going to go to C++ classes, project name, and we're just going to create a new C++ class. I have zero clue what Quixel content is, but I guess that's whatever the integration was. I kind of, I'm a little curious about that. So we're going to create an actor and let's make it public and give it a name. So I want to call this one uh, base, let's just call it building. Or let's, yeah, we'll just call it building. And we'll leave the path the same. I don't, I don't really see us making more than one class for this series, honestly. Uh, we very well could make a interaction component for the character to help interact with this, but we're going to be setting up a lot of functionality for the base building inside of the actual uh, building class itself. So once that's done, let's go ahead and create the class and go figure video, Visual Studio opens for me. Alrighty, back in your IDE, in my case, Rider, we're going to open up building.cpp and building.h. Alright, once we have that set up, the only things we really want to do right now is go ahead and get rid of tick. So we're just going to strip out that function and set b can ever tick to false. Now, we're pretty much, for the most part, set up. The only thing I also want to do now is I actually want to enable live coding to make my life a little bit easier. So what we can do here is at the bottom right here, click the little three dots and enable live coding. Uh, hot reload, let's see. All right, so that's gonna complain about that, but we'll have to do that anyways. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close down the editor. Editor, words are hard, and go ahead and recompile. Alrighty, once that's done, you should be able to click down here and live coding should actually be enabled. So if you hit show console, you'll have the basic stuff. I've already did the quick live coding test, but we should be good to go. All right, next up, let's go ahead and look at our base here. So we're going to mimic this. So what we want to do is we want to create a static mesh component. And obviously, we need a foundation first just before anything. So what I'm going to do on the actual actor by default on begin play is we want to create a static mesh component or the instant static mesh component for the foundation. And that's, that's literally going to be just it because whenever that actor spawns that means we want to create an actual static mesh or sorry an actual foundation to start building upon so what we can do is on begin play is literally do that so we need the instant static mesh component so let's go ahead and try this out so let's do instance static mesh component and here we have you instant static mesh component which we're probably going to want to include. So let's do hashtag include components instance static mesh component dot h. All right, cool that it was the correct one. And we want to create it. So here we're just literally doing add instance static mesh component. So let's go to Google and see actually what the function would be in C++. And it just hit me as I was looking it up. If we're going to have a found, or if we're going to automatically have a foundation, we may as well just simply add that component in the constructor. That just makes more sense. So that's what we're going to do. So we want to make sure we forward declare this in our header. So let's come above our class, do our forward declaration, and let's go ahead and add the properties. So I'm going to do it right here. This is going to be a U property. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and make it blueprint uh, let's do read only not i'll just give it a category set the category to tutorial you can do whatever you wish all right so from here we want to add our instance mesh component and let's call it foundation mesh however this doesn't really give much of an indication of what it is so let's search for foundation or set it to foundation instance mesh and now we want to create it and assign it. So set that equals to create default sub object u instance static mesh component 
instanced static mesh component. Or foundation instant static mesh component. Simple as that. Make sure, there we go. Oops. And then from here, we want to set it as the root. So root component equals foundation instanced mesh. All right. So let's see. Do we have a typo here? Or is it some planning about something else? Instant static mesh component. Oh, I just realized I messed that up. So we have to make sure it's U instant static mesh. I don't know why I didn't catch that earlier. And there we're good to go. So we have our, essentially our instant static mesh component right from the get go. And then we have it for the root. So from here, we can follow along and on begin play, I guess we would just go through and well, we can just add an instance. So let's give that a try. So let's get our foundation instance mesh and we'll just do a simple for loop. So for u int 8, i equals 0, i is less than 3, and increment i. Okay, so we're going to get our foundation instance mesh. We're going to add an instance. I guess we could add instances. This should be just an array of transforms, which probably is not actually a bad idea, but we're just going to stick with this for the time being. So here it takes in a transform. So here we need to set kind of the base transform. So let's do f transform. Let's do mesh transform. I'm just going to set that to equal an empty transform. So equals f transform and call the constructor on it. So we pass in the mesh transform. And then what we can do is just increment the z axis on the mesh transform. So what we're going to do is f vector mesh vector equals mesh transform dot get location and from here we can do mesh vector dot z we're going to increment that by in this case 250 just to follow along and from there we want to re-add it to mesh transform so mesh transform dot set location we're going to set it to mesh vector so to keep with the naming, I'm going to actually rename this to Mesh Location instead, just to make it a little bit easier to read. So something along the lines of this. I'm going to go ahead and close down the editor and give it a relaunch. And it just hit me because we're going to assign this to a base for testing. We actually want to make this editable from the actual blueprint itself. So we want to make this edit default only for the time being. Let me actually close that back down and relaunch. Sorry about that. Alrighty, once we're back in the editor, we're going to press control space, not that, control space, head over to our C++ classes, go to our building uh, class right here. We're going to create a blueprint class as a test. We'll just throw it right into content. And let's just call it BP underscore building. We're going to go to our foundation instance mesh, come over here to the static mesh, and we're just going to set it to the cube. Compile and save that. And then what we can do is we can just simply drag and drop it, just like so. So ours, obviously we can't see it. It would be probably pretty easy if we had something else to indicate, so we may add that later. But then again, we're going to be kind of doing this on the fly, so it's not too big of a deal. But anyways, when we press play, as you can see, we now have three right here. Yep, we have three total. So we are good to go. We know that we have our static meshes being created. They're all set up in instance together. So we know we are good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that and delete our old one and just do a save all. So what one thing we could technically do is if we added a, uh, a scene component like so. There not anything to actually visualize. I thought there was something here that you could use to see the scene component. I might be wrong. Yeah, I guess I'm wrong. But anyways, I'm not too worried about it. I'm trying to think, what is that? I know there's a target. You can use that to uh, kind of see where you're at. But unless I'm being just blind, which I might be. I'm trying to think what that is. Alrighty, I went ahead and just added an arrow component instead, so it'd make life a little bit easier. 
when we drag and drop it and move it around, we can actually see where it's going to be. So I have that as a child of our foundation, so it's going to be pointing that way, obviously. And if I rotate it a little bit, we'll see that, well, obviously it has been rotated. So that's just kind of an indication for us to visually see for the time being where it actually is in the world, because clearly we're not going to be having any sort of arrow later down the road, because, well, for starters, we just don't want to see it. But uh, yeah, so we have kind of the basic setup. We have our mesh being created. We have our instances being added right here. And we know we can construct kind of as we please. Now, I want to start adding some other functions in here to kind of just help us deal with taking away or destroying parts of the building that we don't want. So when I press E, for example, I want to build a perform a line trace and hit, you know, one of my buildings or one of my walls or floor, whatever, and destroy it. I want to be able to destroy everything but the original foundation. So we're just going to set up some function, a function here to help us. So that's going to be done in the next video. But for now, that is going to be all. And hopefully this is kind of going on the right path. Anyways, as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to literally all of my videos just like this one. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.